this is a definition that I like of, of um, trauma-sensitive practice. I'll apply it here, trauma-sensitive mindfulness. This comes from the National Center for Trauma-Informed Care here in the US. It's a four R definition. And basically what it says here is any person or organization who is trauma sensitive is following these four R's. I think of it less like a, a steps as more like four notes and a chord. You could play these all at the same time. So the first is realize. You're trauma sensitive if you've done work to realize how widespread trauma is or to realize the widespread impacts of trauma. By virtue of you taking the time to be here today, you know, that's that to me is check that box. You're doing work. Great job. And this is ongoing. Um, trauma has intense biological, psychological, and social characteristics, and it's a lifelong path of learning. So that's the first star. And then the second is recognized. So question for you is, do you feel confident that you could recognize symptoms of trauma in a student or client that you're working with? That's really the, that's really the question. I will be giving you a list uh, if you'd like, and Sean can email it to you of nonverbal signs um, so that you can recognize trauma. But that's second point. Then the third point that builds on that is, would you know how to respond? What's in your toolkit? And I imagine all of you, of course, you have tools. Uh, maybe you do a grounding exercise. Maybe you're trained in trauma. But the third one is, how can you respond skillfully? The fourth is re-traumatization. So at the, 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 inform, the, the, the informing principle of trauma-sensitive practice is the first do no harm, you know, that we're making sure that people aren't um, spinning out and, and, and finding themselves worse for wear inside of practice. So those are the four combined arts of trauma-sensitive practice. So if you apply this to mindfulness and meditation, if you're a meditation teacher, you've realized how widespread trauma is. You can recognize symptoms of trauma inside of mindfulness practice, which is not easy. You can respond effectively, which we'll talk more about. And then you're always looking to avoid re-traumatization. That's, that's basically what you're up to. I'll give one um, brief example of this. Some of you might've been, uh, I don't know if you ever attended a trauma-sensitive yoga class, uh, but yeah, uh, I see a couple had not, I had not. And so I went, I got really curious. I thought, wow, well, what are they, what are they up to in the yoga community, which is actually has been doing more empirical research over about a six year period. They got a head start inside of the meditation community in terms of research. And I went into a class and in the, uh, at the desk, as you walk in, was a basket of, of tokens. And these tokens had two sides to them. And do you know how, um, if for those of you that have been to yoga classes, sometimes the teachers will do adjustments. They'll do physical adjustments where they're actually like, they might come over and move your body or touch you. Well, as you can imagine, unsolicited touch would not be a very trauma sensitive practice. You know, say someone's had a person, an experience of their boundaries being violated, or they experienced interpersonal trauma on some level, you know, touch without permission would be very, could be very evocative. So in this basket, the tokens, uh, on one side, it said, basically, I'm open to receiving adjustments. The second side said, basically, no, thank you. And you put this at the front of your mat. And so the teacher, without needing to ask you every time, can see, oh, this person does or does not want to be touched inside the class. And I just thought, oh my gosh, that was so smart in terms of, a, uh, I just felt creative. You know, I just felt creative, like a way that we get to empower the yoga students and empower the teacher uh, so that the teacher knows how to respect people's boundaries. I just, I just when I saw it, I thought, wow, creativity, so ingen in ingenu, what's the word? Ingenuity? Inge <laughs> In you know the word ingenious ingenious that seems a little I wasn't mean like it's genius ingenuity in ingenuity You're ingenuity right. that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the one that's the one so I just thought like oh so cool and I think this is why it feels so I really enjoy these conversations and why I've been really looking forward to being with Sean here is that you, you're all by virtue of what I know about Sean and this community you are all already 
in this practice. Like you're thinking about how to take care of people. And so it's a very practical and live conversation about what are the best practices inside of a contemplative container. What do we do about body scans? If you're someone that leads body scans, uh, what do you do about unsolicited touch? What if you're a teacher that wants to hug your students? Like there's just so many different things to consider. And um, so that's what, that's what trauma sensitive mindfulness um, really is in my experience. 